Welcome to today's Daily Awesome. <laughs> this is still the April 12th call. And we're actually continuing the conversation. I switched shirts because it's sweating in here. You guys want to know the real story? I, it's so hot in here that I started sweating. Why? Because my wife is gone and she didn't turn the AC on. So me like a dumbass, I'm in like 80 some odd degree bright light room sweating like a motherfucker recording shit for you guys. But we're talking about a continuance to this should I date my or should I sleep with my ex should I re-hook up with my ex and we were talking about it and in yesterday's awesome even though we're recording this on the same day but how you know whatever we shared a certain perspective that was like man you, you know you can fuck up you, you as a man the real story of man you're gonna fuck up and you gotta know where a place to go is but you also need to hear the truth about some of this as well and why so many people give the advice that they give on it because it's, it's man, there's truth, man. You got, you got to speak. We, we got to talk as men. And so that all being said, go to the Austin Men's Development Board, follow the link down below. You can get the way of the sexual man. It's awesome. J just, man, we wrote these things and did these things for a reason, not to like trick you to buy our stuff, but to see what our community was all about. And there's a free community. There's a free PDF. Every month we'll do a different one. And on top of all of that, if you do want to, interact with us at a deeper level you know i'm on the free board all the time and all these guys are on the free board all the time but if you do want to act at a deeper level you can join our membership and i encourage you to do so it's a great time i love it i love being a coach but let's talk about this man because i went off and recorded that video and they're still going on and on about all of this should i sleep with my ex and talking about it and all this shit man and we get crazy with it and we've all been there and there's really no judgment about it but god damn man who doesn't like to stick their dick in crazy? Who doesn't like that? And I'll t and let's just go back to this. In my days of dating, uh, being a dating coach and all this sort of stuff, I always got guys going like, man, I just want to fuck a stripper. It's going to be so amazing. Or God, man, I just want to fuck a, a Latin chick because I haven't. Or I want to fuck a black chick. Or I want to. And, and there's this image of this new frontier of this stereotype of what things are supposed to be right? And we all want it. And we want it because it's crazy. We don't just want it because it's a new conquest, but we want to experience this new thing, right? And, and man, we love it. And here's the, here's the truth, man. You fuck people. They're all kind of the same, man. You know, they're all kind of the same. You know, some of the stereotypes fit, some of them don't, whatever. And we're not trying to promote some sort of racist thing. Like women are so much more similar than their different cultural or ethnic backgrounds or where they work. And I'll tell you this. In fact, here's the real stereotype. If you are going to fuck a bunch of strippers is get used to some bad sex because most of those girls are stripping and they're showing their sexuality because they're uncomfortable with their sexuality. And their real sexuality is far different than the one that they promote on stage to work for a living. You know, which is fine. And they can do that. I'm, I'm a big fan, man. I'm still friends with so many strippers, even though I've been in a strip club for a while. But it's so funny because like, you know, them, and then you go to their their weddings and shit like that after their kids get born or one of them, uh, you know, her kid just went to the hospital. And I was like writing on her Facebook about it and all this sort of shit. But it's just it's an interesting thing of what we want, what we want to stick our dick in and see. There's that same sort of fucking crazy of what we want to stick our dick in when our ex-wife comes back to us or our ex-girlfriend and they're, they're giving us that comfort and they're giving us that thing. And we talked about it yesterday and we feel that feeling and that urge is coming towards us and we, you know, we want, it's going to make us feel good. And there's so much drive in it. There's so much drive of like, man, I'm going to, I'm going to conquer this guy. I'm going to fuck, I'm going to own this. I'm going to make her mine. But God, man. And then that, that break happens as soon as your dick goes in, your dick goes in her and she relaxes and she turns into girl mode. She goes, Oh my God, I just love, I wish I could have this again. And you melt and you go, man, this is heaven. And like I said, once you blow your load, it's done. And that may not be the case all the time, but that's very common. But what do you get from that? What do you get? And this is what I want to talk about. When something is dysfunctional and you feed it what it wants, it gets worse. And this is why we warn against it. All right. When something is not going right and you give it more of what it is craving and wanting and desiring, man, that's where you get fucked up. And so when I talk about dysfunction, I'm talking about anything. And think about this, man. I have a lot of experience with people in addiction. But like when people are, are fucking junkies, man, and they're junkies, and they want to get out of that pain and they're, they're fucking alone and shit's not right and they can't find it. And they had a bad day and they got their shit stolen and fucking some dude. I mean, this shit happened to me. I remember I was passed out in my car and I wake up and there's some homeless dude pulling down my pants. I'm like, well, what the fuck are you doing? They're like fucking like, you know, you have all this shit happen to you. 
that perhaps traumatizes you, let alone getting sick. God, man, it's fucking horrible. You just want somebody to, to chill you out. You just want somebody, please, please feel my pain, feel my pain, feel my pain, feel my pain. And you go and you give it and you go, it's all right. You know, I'll comfort you, go to a family member, somebody go, I love you. I'm going to help you out. You tell the person, you know, they're coming off a smack or whatever it is, or, or crack or whatever the shit. And you're like, man, it's okay, man. I care for you. I have you there. You give, you feed the dysfunction. Now, of course, you don't want to see your loved one go through pain, but you're, you're feeding the dysfunction because that person's in active addiction. You feed that, guess what it does? That's when it feels a little bit better. And rather than ripping off a stranger, rather, rather than fucking over a stranger, rather than lying to a stranger, it's going to go to you. The strong person, the person that they know that can handle it, the person that they know they're not harming is bad because they don't want to be a bad person. They're just dependent upon this thing. And so they're going to go for it, man. And they're going to fuck you over. And then you can't wrap your head around it. Let's give dysfunction to something else. Say you're a little bit unhealthy, man. You're a little bit unhealthy and maybe you drink too much. Maybe you smoke too much. Maybe whatever it is. And, and you go with that pain. You wake up and you go, man, I don't fucking don't want to be hung over again. I don't want to goddamn smoke cigarettes again. I don't want, you know, I don't want you know, this shit to happen again. But you got to feed that dysfunction, right? So you got to get better, man. Sometimes that dysfunction is going, no, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to run 10 miles today. I'm going to George Bush it. That was one of my favorite things about, uh, you know, when he became president, uh, George Bush Jr. One of the things was, is that, you know, he, he always drank a lot, but one of the things he would do to cure his hangovers was to run. So we do the opposite. We get over it. We get over it. And we do that and we feed that opposite because we're going to be healthy, man. We're not going to be in pain. We're going to fucking get our shit together. We're going to focus up. This makes me feel better. This makes me feel good. Man, I'm on top of the world. I can run. Uh, you know, I don't feel hungover anymore. I'm, I, I feel clear. I can do my job. I can be in front of something. I, I'm, I'm functioning again because I did this, which just means now I can drink again. So let's fucking do it all over again. We can't feed the dysfunction. When we feed the dysfunction, we get the same pattern going because the dysfunction is so loud that if we don't stop it and say, Hey, I don't know what the fuck to do, because this is eventually what, when you get to a high level of fucking up, when you get to a high level of, let's say sex addiction, or let's say you get to a high level of you're going through these volatile relationship swings back and forth. When you get to a high level of drug use or any of those things, you need to force separation. You need that physical separation. Now the treatment of addiction, how I, I believe it is in the, the route that I go, isn't that you have to have this stone wall. So I believe you don't need drugs to live, so I stay abstinent from them. But the idea isn't that I hate drugs. The idea isn't that I dislike it. The idea that I isn't that I have a resentment about it. The idea is that I love it, but I do it to the point where I fuck it up and I choose not to do it. But I still love getting high. Fuck, man. I do all the Wim Hof stuff. I fucking do all this breathing exercise. I get high every day, man. I still have the pain. I still have the catharsis. I do jujitsu like that. I do all this sort of shit like that. But the deal is, is that, man, man, what I fucking need to keep in check that is key is absolutely that if I am feeding that dysfunction, I got to check myself really quick because I'm going to put myself, I'm going to paint myself into a corner where I need to have a force stop, where I need to break, where I need force in order to make me change because I am so wrapped in the dysfunction that my whole lifestyle, you know, comes around it. And this is one of those things that I was saying, I'm grateful for all my fuck ups in life. I've had a lot of problems. And, uh, you know, if I have a lot of problems now, it's like, man, I know I can solve them. I have a lot of faith in that, but I didn't before. But because I hit walls and was forced to go like, hey, maybe I should back off this. Maybe I should change in some whatever ways. You know, that taught me great, great things. But save yourself some of the pain. What I realized from coaching is a lot of guys out there are normal. A lot of guys out there don't need to push it that far. You know, some for some reason, whatever, I took the stupid juice when I was born or whenever they like, you know, change your first diaper or do whatever when you're a baby. And it kind of worked out that way for me. And it's been a great teacher. But you do not have to have that same sort of road as that. Stop feeding the dysfunction. Stop sticking your fucking dick in crazy thinking that you're going to get a response that is love. You know, stop making love a transaction. Stop making love a justification. Stop making love something that you have to talk yourself into. And instead, make all your morals, beliefs, love, experiences, relationships with something and somebody. 
man, something that's a choice and an expression. And the key to a choice and an expression doesn't mean that you have to argue and go to war with yourself in your head in order to make it happen. It means that it just happens. The sad thing is, is wouldn't it be nice to just have a life like that? I think you can. And that's really what we strive for. But you got to work for it a little bit. Live in a different society. We have different cultures or whatever. But anytime you're fighting, anytime you're arguing, anytime you're in that mode, especially with yourself, man, you're not making a choice. You're reacting to the life that's in front of you. And, and why would you do that with the most important things? The only reason why you would do that is because you don't know another way. So let's know that other way. Anyway, go to the link down below, download the stuff, get on our groups, interact. Why? Because that's why we do this. I am talking to a group of 15 people because we're a community and they're all going to talk back to me probably for another hour or so or whatever it is. You know, and that's a, that's a beautiful thing. You don't need to, to live your journey of being a fucking badass dude alone. Do it and be a part of what we're doing. That's why this podcast is here. That's why the Awesome Men's Development Free Board is there so that we can all interact and grow this thing in an awesome way, man. And that's, the only re that's the only way I want to have a business, all right? That's pretty fucking cool. So do it. Do it. Like Shia LaBeouf says, do it. Exactly like him.